All right. So last class, what we have seen was the HTTP servlet with the JSP. We have seen two different forms, uh, two different HTTP methods, get and post. And also we have seen how do we really make a request for the HTTP get and the post methods. The HTTP get is a very simplest method used to get the status of a resource from a server. Using a browser, we could typically get it by hitting the URL on the browser. It directly hits the HTTP get request and we get the response back. We have also seen that HTTP post method can be potentially invoked with the HTML form and a submit button. So where form can have a post method, method attribute with the post as a value and we have an action attribute with the actual URL which we want to point at, with which we are actually able to make a request to the post post method of the servlet and the servlet could directly handle the response to the client. Basically from when we hit it through browser, the response was given to the browser directly, the HTML content, right? We have also seen response.set content type where we could say text.html with which the, the response what we give can be potentially rendered as HTML content. The browser understand that. Whatever the HTML tag that is being a part of the response data could be rendered accordingly. Let's say, for example, BR is a line break that breaks, splits the response from one line to other line. Likewise, we could embed the HTML tags and that will have a meaningful effect. That is why we said response.set content type within broad, uh, for which we give text.html, text slash HTML. So overall, we have seen three, dif three different style of finding the response. Number one, servlet handling the response directly to the client, where we say response.get writer as a print writer object, and then we say uh, the write object dot print ln, or write be for the actual data to be written. Then we delegated the control from a servlet to a JSP, wherein JSP was directly invoked and the JSP displayed the data on its own, the static data. And extent, but how do we change that control? Delegated the control from servlet to JSP with the help of a request dispatcher object where I can also share my screen. So where is the response? Yeah. This is the HTTP request. So we say this was the print writer object, get writer, response at get content type, we have seen it. So we have made use of something called request dispatcher. We have a response object prepared, request dispatcher, where which JSP wanted to hand over the control to. We create a request dispatcher for that resource. Then we forwarded to that to the, uh, the request and response object to that JSP. So what had happened was, So what had happened? Directly it was delegating the response from the servlet to JSP and the JSP was controlling it. JSP was displaying the data on its own. But an extension of which a third flavor was not just delegating a control, we also wanted to pass on some data from the server to the client, which is where in the same request dispatcher object, we have actually Appended or we actually stuffed in a, a attribute, right? Requ request dot set attribute. We bound a message with a key. So this is how we have done that. Response dot set attribute. Message is a key. This is a case sensitive key though. And the message object. This could be any object, potentially a string or list or set, whatever we have seen. And the message, whatever we want to pass on, we are binding it. From within the JSP, what we do? We are getting ulta, the other side of it. Request dot get attribute of the same key what we have bound. We are retrieving it back in the server. So this is a just a quick overcap of what we have discussed. We'll also run the server. Now I'm just running simply running the server from here, not from run as server from the project here. If I do run as server, it will potentially open a new tab on the browser. Now I don't want to do that. I just simply say starting the server. The browser will be ready to come back here. So this is my index. You say index.jsp, nothing happens. Paste.jsp. You see, 
December 11, 2019. This usual trick that we do just to understand that the server is running and we are looking at the latest content, right? 8.29 PM, IST 2023, December 11. So this was the get request. We hit that. We hit from the browser directly. It hit the HTTP get method and we get the response 7.46 the time. So 8.28.19 is the time that we have. For the server response by a post method, we have a HTTP HTML page with the content what we have here. We had a form with a type element. The form should have an action that says the context root slash the URL pattern. The URL pattern is nothing but on top of the servlet page that you have. That's a unique URL you find the servlet, subsolute fundamental subservlet. This is how your servlet gets identified by the servlet container. So this is a URL, this is a, your choice, whatever you want to give. You can keep it short if you want, but you can make it, you can make it a bit meaningful, however you want to have it. So we gave this URL pattern as a prefix with the prefixed with the context root. And there was a submit button. This was the bare minimum required. And when the button is clicked, it posts or submits a request to the post object, post method. That is when we get the response back. Message from the server, HTTP post method, 820. If you go to the content, let's say here, type in, sorry, go to the date here. You see, 821. That's the date we are in now. So 820. Maybe you see it. You ask for a confirmation resubmission, you get the latest time, right? So we have also seen put a debugger here to understand it's his post method was it. I clicked it twice, that's why you see, and also the message we put it there. So this is a recap of what we have seen so far. Now, as what we have seen yesterday, this is one fashion or one style of invoking HTTP server, both the get and post method, and we are using the browser as a client or agent, but it's not necessary that we should use only the client. There are a couple of other ways using which you can potentially make a request, right, for HTTP server by hitting the get and post methods. One simple way is to use the client. Clients, the command line utilities, what I could think of is there's one, something called C URL, curl, they say, which is a pretty old legacy uh, utility in Linux. Also, it was available, made available in Windows as well, right? You could use that. There's one more thing called HTTP, HTTP, right? So this is a simple and elegant, intuitive, modern utility, command line utility, HTTP, HTTP, IE, so or HTTP, we call it as, right? So you go here, learn more, install it. It's a Python based utility. I make it a bit better. So this is where you get it, right? There is a tutorial. I want to show it here. In my machine, let me clear it. So I am using a MacBook. Where is HTTP? I have installed it using Homebrew. This is HTTP I have. So you, how do you invoke it? HTTP is the executable to invoke HTTP. And then you need a post URL, post the URL of it, local host. Whatever you give it in the browser, the port number, JSP servlet request slash server. There you go. Exact URL what you have, copy and paste as well. And I typed it because I'm I'm pretty clear on the host context root and the URL pattern. In case you think you are not very well versed or you are not memorized it, not to worry. You can very well go here, copy, and then paste it. HTTP and then paste it, it's going to help you with the response. So what do we get? First and foremost, we see that, right? Here in the browser, you don't really get to see that. But still do that with the settings. Not settings. More tools, developer tools. You go here, you could see that as well, right? So go to the network, reload it. You click on the request, right? You see 200, okay, a green color was there. That means the response was processed successfully. This is the shortcut you could do that. Preview and response you get it from within the browser. But typically we don't do this until otherwise we want to debug anything. Otherwise we, our job is to hit the request, the URL, get the response back, be happy. 
So here you see the headers, what you see. This is what exactly you see in this because it's a command line. We get to see more, little more details than what we are interested in, right? Bare minimum essentials, I would say. HTTP status, what is it 200? How do I understand? So you can do HTTP status course. Just do a Google search. So this is the best website, I would say. Wikipedia, where you get to see this stuff, HTTP status course. Go here. Let's talk about, totally there are five series of course. One XX, any response that starts with one XX, right? Two XX, three XX, etc. Two XX is successful. The request was successfully received, understood, and accepted. That is what we see here. One XX is informational, two XX is successful, three XX is redirection. Meaning the server redirects your request to an internal component. Four access is client error. Anything wrong from the client. Maybe famous is 404, file not found. Meaning you requested for a resource that is not actually available in the server. That means the client was not aware of the actual resource with an identification. So this is a potential error. Maybe a bad syntax or cannot be put. Five access is the server error. Meaning there was an error. But that happened at the server side, not in the client side. That's a 5x, it's a series. You look at 200 here, 200 OK. That means standard response for successful HTTP request. Another good website I want to show you here is yeah, HTTP.dev. It's an interesting website. Status course, HTTP.dev. You click on this, 200 OK. You get to see, right? Written by the server to indicate success. The meaning of success and accompanying response body vary based on the HTTP request that was sent. For now, we do have a lot of different subtleties, little different responses within two XXX itself. For now, this is not of a great importance. Maybe we'll see one or two more when we get into the more details, right? HTTP, get this is what we get. HTTP 1.1, that's a protocol version, 200 OK. That's what exactly we have seen it. Connection key polling. Content type text HTML. This is a mind type. We look at it. We have paused it here. Do get. We do explicitly set response dot set content type text slash HTML. That's what we see. It's called mind. What does mind stand for? Multipurpose internet mail extension. Right? Multipurpose purpose internet mail extension is an internet standard that extends the format of email messages to support texting character sets. Am I setting the response in a plain text or a rich text, probably HTML or any other format? Or I'm sending a JSON response or CSV comma separated values or an XML or a PDF, whatever it is, right? So you could say a list of mine values, right? Mine types, you could do that. Common mine types, mine types.io, there are so many uh, newer websites, you could see application. Typically, you see application.json, right? Application.xml, application.csv, or text, text slash yes, you could use anything else. Text.html. In case of plain text, what if you don't set it in plain? Text slash text, my bad. Text slash plain. That means it's a plain text. Let's do a simple tweak, right? Put it. What if I don't set this? You even do get, you just wanted to do, yeah, simple test. I'm saving the file, stopping my server. As always, I do my usual housekeeping activities. Build the project, I also clean it. They clean the module, Tomcat module directory. Again, I build this, and then I say, run as run as server. Got this, yes. Yes. Now, when I run on server, the browser tag automatically opens, right? And I've had it my own here. Because I do have my client here, I could directly put it, right? I can do it. Let's assume I do it. Okay. Let's go. I open my more tools, developer tools, open it, keep it here. Hit. What do you see? Okay, we got the response. But how did how does the response look like? Does it really come like a HTML content which was rendered? The browser being a client or the agent, the HTML client, 
understood the tags, meaning of the tags, what you have given, slash BR standing for line break, it brought the next content, the following content to the next line, slash B stands for bold. So whatever the text surrounded by from within these bold tags, it was highlighted in a bold. And then this transformation did not take place here. Why? Look at it here, 200 OK. What is that response type you have got? Transfer encoding, see here. Accept is fine. Response, response. User agent is fine. Um, response header, connection, time out, shunt, draw, review, response. You get this? All right. Why I don't see that directly here? Transfer request headers is fine. Response we have. Okay, let me put it here. Same content I put it here. Do you see? Okay, it was missing. Yeah. You don't see the content type that is absent. That means by default, it's applied. That's why you don't see it. Here you see, content type was explicitly present in the response header. Here as well. Here you don't see that. Meaning, the absence of the content type indicates is a plain text. So the response, here you don't really get to see, right? That there is no difference. Because I'm using a client command line terminal, it doesn't have the capacity to translate the content into the HTML format, which text. So it doesn't really make a big difference except the presence or absence of this line in my response. Here this is present, but here it is not present. That's the only difference I could make. Whereas this is a dedicated or exclusive client of HTML is a browser. Here I get it in the plain text, whereas here I get it in the rich text. That's the text slash HTML. That's the job of multi-purpose internet made extension. Just wanted to explain you in detail. That's where I created this example. All right. So that's it. I'll come back. I would preferably we take it back to the internet type HTML because most often the most preferred, right, used client for the web programming. It's a web programming is the browser. Browser is typically HTML, hypertext markup language, compatible client. So browser understand how, how to interpret the meaning of the tags, what do we get it here? HTML tags and the response can be prepared in accordance to the, the HTML tags with which meaningfully you get to see a visually appealing response you get it. Unlike this, this is just a plain text. It doesn't really make any sense, right? When you read it, just when you look at the content. Here you can understand there are two lines of content. First line is a simple, just a one line response. Second line has got something highlighted, maybe as a um, header and then the value, something you can visually interpret it. That's the beauty of the HTML MIME, the HTML response with the MIME uh, content type as a MIME. So let me as usual clear it. I hope you guys are okay, clear with this. I will build a project, yeah. Let me put it back now. Same thing, I go here. Yeah, I reload it here. So this response, you see the content type as this content type as come text slash HTML. Same thing, I come back. I just hit it again. You see content. Type. Earlier it wasn't, but now we get. Please pay attention. Here still the care set is by default ISO 88.91. That means it's a Latin input. I will also try to do that. Let me push that into my the response content do get itself, right? So what I'm gonna do here, message equal to plus equals. Let me put it. I'll also add a lion break. Let me say UTF or uh, um Tamil content. I just and then I can directly paste it. Then see. That's it. I'm just adding it to the message. I'm respond. I'm adding it back. Let me clean the Tomcat work directly. Clean the project. It's always good to do this. Okay, I think I'm not selecting the project, but clean all projects. All right. I refresh and then do a build. Then I say stop. Run this. And I'm sorry. Right. To this next that's okay, finish. So automatically it's gonna open a browser content. Yeah, I get it. 
I come back here, I reload it. All right, what do you see here? Oh, okay, I do not put this line click. I would add another key here once again. Nothing wrong. Build the project. Yeah, it's reloading, reloading the context of the DB. Means this application server and the content is reloaded. Here you go. Why do we get the content as question mark, question mark, question mark, but not the properly rendered content? What I have just pasted is simple. Meaning something other than a typical English language, right? The characters that can be represented in English, which was that's why the encoding helped us, which you have seen in the, one of the earlier videos. That's because was, the hint is in front of you. You see here, character set is ISO 88591. You could also see what is this? This is Latin in ISO IEC, right? It's the Latin alphabet number one. This is one of the in 1998, the oldest encoding, pretty old legacy, it did not support the characters that could be represented in other than like the character set that needs more, more spacing to be represented. Right? That's the beauty of Java. By default, that's the one of the reasons the character data type in C takes one byte, whereas in Java, it takes minimum and also be checked by two bytes. Right? Character data type in C, that's just Java. Because Java supports Unicode. Can I put it? In C, C++, the cache data type is traditionally used to store ASCII characters, although it can also be used to store any characters in other encodings. In contrast, Java and Python are used Unicode by default. That's why the C characters in C++ are 8 bits, that means single, single byte, 1 byte. Java, it is 16 bits, that means 2 bytes. So it can accommodate a larger sized data that can be represented in Unicode. It's a bit more in depth. You could, out of your interest, you can do a, an extended research on this, right? How we, the character set and encoding actually helps the content to be rendered. That's that where the dots are connected, right? So let's come back here. I get the data because the response type, I can also come back and hit it here. See? Still, I get the line break and I get this as question mark, question mark, question mark. Because the character set, what I am setting is ISO 885991. I am not explicitly insisting or enforcing that the character set, the server giving a response back to it. Let's take a look here. This is the server that was responded. Right? The backend, we have a client, we have a server. JSP servlet, we have it. It does a processing computation. It gives the input, you pass it back to the result or output. When the server side component sends back the response, it gives the content as a Latin encoding. Even though you have the data, which is of a different character set for encoding, but it is not conveying that the data to be treated in Unicode format. That's why it gets lost in shape and the receiving client does not really understand that this has to be treated differently because of the encoding, what it is said, and it doesn't have a way to display this. It is a basic rule. If you are not aware how to display a character, how to render a particular character, you, sh you show a question mark. Sometimes you could have seen, you might have seen that there's a square box, the bottom box, that as well appears. So how do I insist, insist here? You say response dot set character encoding that's the method my character set the response being simple for example utf8 so how do i set it so here you have character sets now uh, over the mouse here set character encoding right response character sets set content type how do you really set that character encoding so utf8 will do that what does it actually take as an argument say character encoding what does it take actually the java dot you to show me right open it here is the content string is a character set whatever you want to set so you do have character set dot 
कैंसर में जावा है नहीं वो कैंसर का है इतना मैं नॉन जस्ट बी मेरा वो भी बहुत कर रहा है जावा कैंसर व्हाट इज द क्लास इंफोडिंग स्टैंडर्ड कैश सेक्स दैट्स या स्टैंडर्ड कैश सेक्स नॉट द कैश सेक्स स्टैंडर्ड कैश सेक्स क्लीन द प्रोजेक्ट in the tom card work direction all right i am stop here i clean it and then refresh we can also add a bit more right whatever the character encoding by default available you could print it just in case you want to do right response dot get character input it's a string so you get it here let's say Important code, and then you put print it. Okay. You put import. So you would understand what is by default available. Then you could get this here. Just directly have the this statement. What is that? Recent input. You could directly get this. You don't really need to make it. Okay. So we get this. So I will in this. Okay. So refresh. Build the project. Okay. I can also. Clean it. It's always better. Then run it. Run as an on server. Yes. Choose the server here. Then say finish. So automatically it opens. What you wanted to check is this, right? Then you reload this. Yes, it did not. It still has the same thing. But the reason also I guess we did. Why did you do it? Not the things. That should be, I guess. And go to street fifty eight. Ten bytes is fine. Most time that's fine. Thirty bytes. Okay, here it is. Equal fifty eight. Okay, I'm not that. Not yet. This encoding, character encoding, okay. Okay, new string, okay. This is when you are encoding it according to the value you give. So I want to set it, is it okay? Just a minute. So let set the character. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, okay, you could use it directly this way, yeah. That's better. Set character input. Ah, oh, my bad. Okay, you could have directly done this. That's interesting. Just a string, a simple, right? Nothing. You don't need to go there. That's right. My bad. Just give this. This is sufficient. All in the the browser, the client needs to know is UTF-8 for filter. So let's say clean. One second. I will give this as well. I thought you can directly make use of an existing constant. You could directly give you table. That's all. So run as, run as. Yeah, that's simple. Sometimes uh, the answer will be very simple. We'll be making it complicated as a best example, right? So it has come back. I go here. I reload it. What happened? I think it is not really taking a So effect. Then let us. Why? 
Stop the server. As we have seen, it could be an ID glitch. Sometimes we need to redo it on some things. Refresh, build a project. Then I say, that's another server. Yes, stop. All right. I don't know. Sometimes it will, it will be an ID glitch as well. Let's see. Let me go back and reload this. Hey guys, what you have seen, it is not really taking a care set. Here as well it comes. Should I have to do one more time? I don't know. Yes. No? Why is it? Yeah. 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 I should oh, please. Extra. Okay. This is coming. This is encoding. It is doing. Yes, please. I'm setting it. And then getting the grid character encoding what I see. Right. Yeah. Maybe I have to generate it. This is the cat set. I go back, let's say three. Oh, oh, oh. not this, so not this. three. Yeah, I have it. All right, so why, why, why? Let me come back here. Let me tell it this character. I don't know, I'm just posting it. It doesn't, it's not present here. Yeah, that's fine. Shouldn't be a big deal. I will again start this, right? Yeah. Problem. Problem of deleted directory. Share the container and close and open. I don't know. Types. Yeah. Eclipse. Let me see if it created anything. No, it did not. Probably, yeah, open the eclipse. All right, server, yeah, let's read it. Let's start that. Yeah, uh huh. Okay, so not a big deal. I am delete the server. I can do it. New server, okay. Version 9, I don't know, then it's adding it, finish, yep. Let's start now, yep. It all good. What's the location we have? As always, it won't see Catalina base, Catalina home, metadata, WTP deployed, yeah. What's the directory? Again, same thing. New instance has come. Let's do it. So, also, we have seen it wasn't up yet. Shouldn't take so long. This is what the directory. Okay. okay, but we should be updating here. Okay, so let me add it. Let me add it. Refresh. Get the project. 
and as the run server, I choose this next. Oops, add a finish. If you go now, there you go. So I have all of them. Hopefully, now we should bring right. Why this doesn't get that's interesting piece. It's again okay. That's it. So, what you could do, probably as what you have seen, I don't know, MC checked it. Here itself, we could do that response.set content type. If it is not the case, what we could do? Respond.set content type, right? X slash HTML. Then the okay, that's it. Here itself, you could add. So, Right, instead of this, you keep it. I'm not sure why it is what you have seen. Right, so it has given a condition here. Yeah, text slash HTML, cache to keep it, or response dot. So, Apache themselves they have given, but I don't know why it was taking less. Maybe it could be a bug in Tom, it doesn't take it to right. Okay, yeah, project. Okay. Refresh, build the project, start the server. Start server. Right? So, yeah, get started. Work. Go here. Click on it. Ah. That's return. It could be an ID glitch. Because we're exclusively setting. Maybe as we should, what had happened. We are not. This is not really picking it up. Could be the case. I would clean. Run as run and set. Right. Okay. So it's come. Yeah. It's clearing. Let's go to it. Aha. Uh -huh. So. This is still intact. All right. So why response are set and I'm once again setting it. X slash HTML slash care set equal to equal. Neat. Let me do one last time, otherwise we'll probably stop with this set. Refresh. I don't know. Maybe they say it's an error. Patch it up there. Cannot get server to process. Set sent and connect doesn't work, right? Yeah. Fix man and then coding immediately. None of them seem to work. Yes. Already given cat and coding issues. Hmm? Interesting conference, did you say? Did you say pause it right first? That's what it is. I don't know whether it's really an issue with the dog. Let's see. Maybe that's fine. We can hand control it to JSP if at all, right? Publish, build the project, run as It should work. If it still doesn't work, we have a way from with, from the JSP we could control. So still it doesn't get. I thought I can probably make it better, but looks like it doesn't set. Oh, ho. set you are inputting it a bit on your connector in server XML. Uh -huh. 8.5 connector. Yeah. I see. This is already JSP. We get it. Okay. 
request character encoding for application server to all right. I do set con web dot x. All right. So what we could do here is go here con web dot xml. Inside this itself we can go. Let's give it. What is the that is con directory. There is a web dot xml. All right. We have it here. So that's why you specify mimes map. You have it all of them. There is a request encoding. Let's see where is the input. Okay. Set can then yeah. All right. Probably this we can take a look a little later. I don't think it is. Here we do request that set can then query. HTTP letter is more than that's it. Set you are inputting input to get paid on your connector and server dot x. You could use that as well. Server dot x. Where is that on server dot x? Yeah. Connector element in server dot x. That is my connector. Eight zero eight zero. Um. Yeah. Here we have put eight zero eight zero. I think we could add. Why should I add? AJP okay. Let's take a look. Yeah, you are encoding. So how do you set this? Okay. Where do you set this? At common address. All right. Can we put set this in the order? I don't know, but let me try this. Yeah, let me start. So, and Tomcat has to be restarted, obviously, for sure. Just for the changes to take effort. I would say run without server. Now, by default, Tomcat will start serving all the content. Hmm. You are okay. No, I don't know. Looks like a server glitch. All right, we'll come back here. The video actually got diverted. I wanted to discuss something else. Same way, what you could do use a postman as a client. Let's look at how to use a postman for the same get request and post as well. Right? You could also use VS Code. I want to show. See you all as well. Let's come back. Let's come here. Same you are with this. Let's go to the So by default, you get that response in text. Have a preview. Oh, you get it here. The UTF still doesn't come because of the get method. We are not insisting it. Do whatever we tried, it didn't work. Status 200. We get the response. This is a normal raw response, looks like this. And the preview they give you a HTML preview. 
more like a browser rendering they bring it here. So how do you see URL? I think we have used it here. See you on right documentation. How do you put that? You are a documentation. So by default is a get method is curl you put this, right? So I could actually come here, curl, HTTP, local load, ATAP, and JSP servlet test dash. Yeah, here you go. The response you get. Right. So we have seen different options, right? <laughs> so HTTP pi is a tool, and the curl C URL postman. Likewise, VS Code as well. We have an interesting editor. The VS Code, if you look at it, I guess there's an extension we would install called REST client. If you do that, here as well we have two different versions. I'm gonna show you that. You can't rest the client. It's a simple client within Visual, client, uh, Visual Studio Code. Rest client allows you to send HTTP request and view the response in Visual Studio Code directly. Install it. Yeah. So what you all what it needs is you need a file. Say new file. It should be a dot HTTP or dot rest is a method. Right. That's an interesting option. Yes, for rest client. So yeah, this is a good article. How to rest? Here's the CAP with Visual Studio Code, REST client extensions. You come here, REST client, dot HTTP or dot REST. is a plain text file with an extension. So this is how you make it. Put a comment and then the line starts. Get or post whatever the HTTP methods, the verbs that you want to have, the URL. And out any header body you want to put it, you can find it next time. As of now, only making a very simple line request. So what do you do? New file. You say uh, REST API dot HTTP. Where do you want to store? I put it here. REST API dot HTTP. Right. So you say get request and automatically you say you have to still specify what request you are adding it. Zoom it. Zoom it. So control Z is command is equal. Yeah. Let me do it. All right. What are we doing? Yeah. HTTP local host automatically fills it understands that. JSP server and test slash. I think I've already done it once, so it gives me the cache. I do this. This here you see send request. There's a clickable request. Click on it, here it is. So, from within VS Code, like a command line, enhanced version within VS Code, if you are acquainted, acquainted or accustomed with the VS Code, you could use this. In the VS Code itself, there's another extension I want to show you. In is it here? Something called Thunderclaw. Yeah, this is a beautiful extension, yet another extension. This helps you to have more like Postman it comes within the VS Code itself. Say install, you do that. So what happens is here you get that. Let's say here, Thunderclaw. In the extension, you get it because I've zoomed it. You don't get to see appearance. So I can zoom out. This is the Thunderclaw. Click on it. See here. For now, I close this. 
this as well here. You see, this is where there is a old records I had. I delete this. I delete this. You can connect it. Make a new records. So more like Postman. It is a by default. It comes with a Thunder client, their own API. Click on it. Get a response. That is where you see the history. That is request response. Now I'm going to make a new request once again. What is my URL? Well, then go. They are memorized. You do that or you copy paste. I have my JHP server test. Hello, world. So by default, it's a get. You look at it. This is a get method. You take this. So in same request response. So I've seen multiple different versions of running uh, HTTP get and post. I can also type it in the notes. How many things we have looked at? It? HTTP method. Testing one is browser command line tools. What is that? HTT file URL. Then VS code instructions. What you have seen? One is REST client, other is under client. This is more like post. Tools we have seen post on us. This is more like a shitty file. And client is a. Yeah. So, so far, these are all different variety of our ways, different ways you could actually test the HTTP. The reason why I'm extend, giving a little extended knowledge sharing is because the same fundamentals are applicable when you test REST API as well. Because ultimately, we want to use get, post, put, delete. These are the potential HTTP verbs, right? So let's do the reverse. We have seen the HTTP post. We have also seen an interesting file. What all things we have seen, interesting URLs, right? We have also seen HTTP status posts and the series, right? Series. What is that? One next six. Permission to exit success. We exit this redirection. Four exit client error. Example four not four five not four. Here also you say two and third. Okay. Three not four first error. I exit this server like that. So you also see these URLs and copy and paste. So what are the URLs we have seen? And also see it's an interesting model. There is also one more I wanted to show you. HTTP status dogs. Good website. Okay. More like a dog image. Not at all. Yeah. There was one. I think that's Sharon Arrow. HTTP status logs. Mm -hmm. They have, I think they made uh, here HTTP dot dog. Right. Here you see earlier it was HTTP status dogs. 200 OK. So the puppy comes here. It gives an interesting bit, right? HTTP the dog. Keep on going to not one. You can touch that. Or directly you put it here. Let's say 404. It is not found. The searching is not right. So this is also one of the interesting websites where I used to refer it. All right. So we have seen that. All right. So we have also seen my types data, right? We have seen my my time for my purpose. Internet my extension. What are the common extensions we have seen? 
application.csv application.json application.xml by default is text.plain then for which text what do I mean to me? text .xml. We have also seen response modification. What we have written is response dot set content type. It comes on set character encoding. Of course, it doesn't work. I created work for it is. We have seen the bit which we can actually tame the response. Now let's go here, look at the post. Let's do the reverse order. I make a HTTP post, send it, same HTTP post ID, just to make a get to post. Likewise, I come back to my GS code, same thing, get to post, I make it, my response, here there's a three comes. I come here, same thing, I will copy and paste, but instead I say post, just the comment, comment is not really required. Just enter. Here you see post. I'll get this. Is there a bug? Hello, it's fine. Why I don't get this is still get it. It's, it's should I have to press enter? Or I have to put one more comment. Ah, so I have to. You need to put three hash. Now it does this. So post like You see, so if you want to post whatever we get, he doesn't really have a way to render the content post. So you get the post response. Likewise, we go here or HTTP kind or C URL itself, we can say. How do you make the CUR post like this? Come here to see for post. Yeah. Post section. That is a post. Here it is. Post a simple name for D, whatever you want to add. Data into post. Hyphen D to post. That's it. Hyphen D is what you post. So hyphen D. Let's do the simple hyphen D. Meaning, URL, I am not posting it. I don't have anything to add. Data. Okay. Yeah, here you go. I don't have anything to add. I get back my response. HTML from the post. Likewise, HTT5. That is that's it. How do you give a post method? Put iPhone F you have a file you want to take it. Iphan F is post. This means submitting forms. Whatever you want to add, right? Iphone F post. Same you are going to get. There you go. HTTP post response. So we have seen same post as well via browser. Just add a pressure. Go here, click on this, get the latest timeline looking. From the browser, we have seen HTTP client, we have given iPhone and post. That's the argument you need to differentiate, otherwise, by default, it treats as a get. Get is a default method, right? It gives this 
you also see something else come here, right? From the HTTP one loop, right? We have also seen a curl where curl has a different parameter. We have seen in post, we have seen from the previous code, rest, rest API dot HTTP using REST client and also the Thunder. So again, five different ways we have seen how to make HTTP response, HTTP request response using that. So I think that's pretty much for now today. Sorry about a little longer exploration on enforcing the encoding type. It didn't really work out, seems to be a bug. I'll certainly find out as to how exactly we could do it and show it in a, a different way, right? Hope it was interesting. We will certainly come back here to do, we still need to make a few right? That's the next uh, set we will take a look the next session. Thank you very much. Thank you.